thank you for answering our, our, our question. Luis, my first one will be, how did you work with the young boy on the set? We identified very early on that the role was a very difficult role and I think from a perspective of an, an actor, even an adult would struggle with the journey that he goes on across the four hours of the drama. So we put in things in place to try and help him and give him the best opportunity to do right by the character and the story without burdening him with, you know, the reality of the abuse. You know, we never had conversations with him about the specifics of the abuse. So we brought in a, uh, a, an acting coach called Benjamin Perkins, who's worked on some huge films. And Ben came in to work alongside myself and the other actors, you know, all the team on the job to basically give Max uh, somebody who he could talk to as well as myself, who wasn't distracted by the practicalities of filmmaking. Uh, and we used that and used other things in his life to try and get him to understand the complexities of the emotions he's going through, like the stress of exams or his girlfriend who broke up with him or, you know, balancing the pressures of he himself is a movie star. He was in Detective Pikachu. And so dealing with the pressures of what it's like to be that young kid that's just been in Detective Pikachu and you're going back to school. So trying to use things in his life that we could relate to. Lois, what is the point of view you wanted to put uh, on the story? We have the feeling that there is a kind of restriction in the way of filming uh, in order not to compromise or stylize the subject. Are we right? I think we had this idea going in that we needed to be honest and truthful to the emotions of the characters. It was, let's look at the scene, let's look at the drama and the emotion and then build the coverage and what we need to tell the story from there. And more often than not with some of the higher emotive stuff, it did require an element of flexibility because we tried to create a space where the actors could play and respond. And if you're telling them that that's your mark and that's your mark and that's your mark, it kind of loses an element of its honesty and its rawness. And I think it was about that, really. The key for me was we need to capture the honesty. Babu, how did you react when you first read the script? I was particularly shocked by the dad's reaction. Obviously, Manny's a different kind of person to me. I'm a lot more reactive. And for lack of a better word, I think I would be much more effective in terms of what I did. But um, I found it very difficult watching him not know what to do. So my big thing was trying to understand why he couldn't do anything. How do you take on a role as a protector? And then what do you do when you can't protect the person that you're most meant to be protecting? So looking at that, and I had to really question myself and say, well, what would I do? You know, and would I take the money? And my immediate rest, of course I wouldn't take the money. No, come on, I'd fight. I'd fight right to the end. But, um, I don't think it's that straightforward, you know. We found out statistics like well over 90% of people settle. They'll take the settlement. And actually somebody tweeted recently who said, I'm really looking forward to this show. He said, I would probably take the money. And then he made the point that actually at the end of the day, the alternative is to fight people who have endless pockets, massive legal teams. Not only would you end up crushed, you might also end up in debt. I think what dark money does extremely well, which I'm very proud of, is the fact that in it all, there's this person, for better or worse, it's a, it's a young person, but still a person, you see what I'm saying, who's been abused. And they're going through all sorts of normal changes a teenager goes through, and on top of that, they're having to deal with this emotional stress. And you can see the impact that it has on their lives, the sense of identity, who they are, what they're going to do. And so you can get lost in the legal and all of that stuff, but ultimately it has an impact on a person. And where's the support? From parents, from people around them. Just support, just to be there. The social context of the story is really interesting because uh, it is a middle class family and uh, usually it's not really portrayed in fiction. So is it for you a way to say anything can happen to anyone? It's about power and control. And we're talking about a guy who is very well off, who owns a multi-million uh, pound company. He has a lot of weight and a lot of power and a lot of control. And he imposes that control on a working class family who go to a meeting without lawyers. They're tricked into a meeting and they go along with this thing because they're kind of manipulated and controlled. And I think that happens within the class system in the UK. It's frequent. It's a thing that happens across all, you know. But it, it, I think there's a statement to be made that 
you know, it wouldn't have happened that way if that family weren't a working class family who didn't have the same resources or education because they probably would have had their own lawyer, their own people. They wouldn't have gone to Yonder Star ill-equipped on their own. They probably would have walked out and seeked legal advice a lot earlier. I think it's important to say that because actually a lot of what we say in the world today is something that we don't talk about a lot. There's a lot of talk on race and all sorts of other things, but we don't talk about is that class gap that can happen. And p the word class, I've never been comfortable with, but it's really about uh, opportunity gap. All right, thank you very no, much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you. Thank you.